All right, folks, Jeremy Hazel here from Seven Season Studios. And when we talk about text, one of the biggest things that will make or break your text and one of the most sought after techniques is definitely this drop shadow, right? So I got a question from somebody on our Facebook group going, hey, I got this tutorial in Adobe Illustrator. Can Affinity Designer make drop shadows? And the answer is absolutely. So today in this video, we're going to show you how to master the drop shadow. All right, let's roll those credits and get on into it. All right, so here's what we're going to make today. This is the drop shadow. Now, this is an essential skill to learn for anybody that's involved in text. So let's go ahead and drop this out. Now, the very first thing you're going to want to do, start a new document. I work in 1920 by 1080, and I'm going to make it 300 DPI just in case I want to print it someday. So that's how I get a new document open. Now you grab your artistic text tool, and we're going to just do affinity. All right, now you can pick any font you want. I went to, to I went to dafont.com and I found a 100% free font that I thought was pretty interesting. And this is gonna be called So Stain. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna select that. We're going to then go and find So Stain as my font. And there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring this thing large and in charge here. All right, this works with any font, right? So you can go through, pick any font you like. I'm going to work on this one. Now, the very first thing you have to do, you see this is the text layer. So there's very common things when you work in text with drop shadow. You're going to want to get your text right. Then you come up to layer and you convert it to a curve. Now you see what happened in my layers panel. I now have a group. And if I twirl this group down, it's got curves. This is no longer text, folks. If I was to grab it and grab it with my node tool, you see that it's full of different nodes. That's what makes it a curve. All right, now, I don't wanna edit any of these curves individually, so I'm gonna select them all by holding the top one, holding shift, and selecting the bottom one. And now I'm coming up to my operations and I'm gonna hit add. Now, you see here how it's got these letters overlapping? Watch what happens when we hit add. Now it becomes one solid unit, all right? One image, as you will. So I click and hold, move it to the top of the stack, and I can just delete the group. All right, so now let's move this around real quick so you see now I've got one image. I can't subdivide the A and the F. All right, so, the very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do now, right click, duplicate the layer. Now, I'm gonna keep the top layer black and I'm gonna make this bottom layer red just so you guys see what's happening. All right, now the very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do now that you got this curve, right? It's alone on an island. You're gonna to wanna to put a stroke to it now. We're gonna make it red. I want this to be very bright so that we can see the contrast. I come to my stroke panel in my studio and I blow it up. Now you see how it's consuming the black? That's not desirable. What I wanna do is click draw behind fill and then I wanna make it pretty big, as big as I want my drop shadow to be. I don't want it to really consume like between where the I and the T are here. I don't want it touching. So I think that's pretty good. Now you see you can miter these joints, you can leave them round, you can do whatever you wanna do with it. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it round, I kinda of like the look of it. Now, what you're gonna do now, this is the trick. Come over to layer, expand the stroke. Now let's see what just happened in my layers panel. I now have my curve layer on top, and I have my stroke now as its own separate layer below. You see what I have? Turn it off, turn it on. All right, now we're gonna right click and we're gonna duplicate. Now, you see I've got two curved layers. I'm gonna make this bottom, bottom, bottom one here blue, okay? Just so that we can see what's up. All right, now here's the trick of the drop shadow. 
zoom in real close, make sure you have the bottom blue layer selected, grab your move tool and shift it. Now, notice here the amount of the shift will impact the drop shadow. So I think that I'm pretty good there. And now with holding the shift, select both the red and the blue, come over to your operations and click on subtract. All right, that leaves only the blue. It subtracted anywhere they overlapped and now you have a perfectly positioned drop shadow. Now you can do a lot with this. You don't have to keep it blue. We can go through and we can pick this kind of pinkish color here. We can go through now because this is its own layer. If I wanted to create a stroke, I absolutely could. All right, so you could stroke that thing out just like that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the stroke off it. And then what I'm going to do with this layer selected, still my drop shadow, I'm going to apply a little bit of Gaussian blur. See how that looks. Uh, maybe just a little there. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a gradient. So I'm going to go from bottom to top. Let's go ahead and run the gradient this way so that it's in line with that. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and where this is, I'm going to make this white. Yep. Maybe a little bit more opaque. All right. Good deal. Okay, so there are now endless possibilities for here. You could do the same thing with the individual curve font. You could make it into a Chrome. There's a ton of stuff you can do, but anytime you do a drop shadow, it's really the same technique. Click on it, put a stroke on it, expand the stroke into its own layer, and then offset the stroke and do a subtraction operation. All right, folks, so that's about it. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the videos I post, go ahead and like the channel. Check us out on 7thSeasonStudios.com. And also, if there's something you're struggling with in Affinity Designer, hit me up in the comments below because I do tutorials based on what you guys want to see. I want to add a ton of value because Affinity Designer is one of the best programs out there. All right, folks, we'll see you in the next lessons. Have a good one.